Alright, so this is another ideal gas problem and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about what happens if you change the volume or the temperature of an ideal gas. So let's say we have a balloon full of helium. It's, let's say it's this big. Okay, let's just label this. Um, in here we have, <laughs> this is our balloon full of helium. Um, very perfect. Um, now let's say this has Right now, let's say this balloon is five liters, you know, so it has 5.00 liters of volume. And let's say it's, um, well, it looks pretty cold out right now. I'd say it's about minus 20 Celsius, um, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So let's say it's, uh, that in Kelvin is about 253, 253 Kelvin. Okay, so this is cold. Here we are in Canada and it's cold. And what we want to do is we want to take this balloon somewhere warmer. We want to go down, I don't know, let's go to the Caribbean where it's warm. Um, no, let's go to the Sahara. I think it's even warmer there. So anyways, we're going to go somewhere that's a lot hotter here than here. And our balloon, what's going to happen is it's going to expand. So let's say that our helium, you know, this is the same balloon. Helium. And let's say we've increased the temperature now to 50 degrees Celsius. You know, we're in the middle of the desert with our balloon uh, doing a science experiment. So uh, that in, in Kelvin is about 323, 323 Kelvin. And we want to know, you know, what's the volume, right? What's the volume now of our balloon that we have heated up? Okay, so this is an ideal gas problem. So what we want to do, first thing you always want to do with an ideal gas problem is write down the ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. Okay, so now what we have here is, what did we say? We said the, the volume and the temperature is changing. So we want to isolate those onto one side. So if we just divide both sides by T, and then divide both sides by V, we can rearrange this to get, um, or I'm sorry, divide both sides by T and then divide both sides by P as well. So what we'll get is we'll have V over T, uh, and this is going to be equal to NR over P. NR over P. Now this is really similar as to what was happening in the last video, is we're only changing the volume and the temperature now. We're not changing NR or P. So basically what that means is this term here is constant, so we can write constant. And again, this is exactly the same thing that happened in the last video, is if this term is constant, then our initial volume and temperature have to equal this, and then our final volume and temperature have to equal this. So that means um, there we can relate these two, and we'll write that here. It says that's the same as, well, V1 and T1. So we have our volume and temperature before we heated it. And this is going to be equal to our volume and temperature after we heat it. So this will be V2 and T2. And so this is all we need to work with because this is remaining constant. We can just kind of forget about this for now. And let's just look at this because we have three of these values and we just need to find the fourth. So what we do is, we'll just plug in our values. So first of all, our volume is 5.00 liters. And then our initial temperature was 253 Kelvin. 253 Kelvin. And this is equal to, well, we don't know what our final volume is, so we'll just leave that blank for now. And then our final temperature after heating was 323 Kelvin. 323 Calvin. Okay, perfect. So now all we do is rearrange this a little bit to isolate V2 and then we can solve. So this is the same as saying this is just 5.00 liters um, times 320, uh, 323 Calvin. 323 K. Uh, and then this is over 253 K. 253 K. So we can cancel out our Calvin units. And we're left with 5 times 323 divided by 253. And if you just punch that into your calculator, we will get our V2, our final volume after heating, is going to be 6.38 liters.